this case concerns. The location is off of Long Pond Road on a cul-de-sac known as jo Joshua's Way. It abuts homes and open space, including the town forest. We ask the Zoning Board of Appeals to impose the maximum fine under the bylaw, which could be up to $3.8 million under the terms and of the bylaw itself. The illegal mining was conducted by Shiva Development, whose principal is Scott Spencer, starting in approximately 2015 and for con continuing for as many as seven years under the rules of building a subdivision road and five house lots for houses that have never been built. Instead, for years, Spencer conducted a standalone, unpermitted, unregulated... Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there. There was a permit for what Mr. Spencer did, issued by the building department, and you know that, and we know that, and I'm not going to let you start talking about things that are not true. That is not true. Where is the building department permit? The building I conducted department has done their job. This, I, I, I'm not going to get into this because I've read this whole thing. And there are so many things in there that are just erroneous and ridiculous. And look, I've had enough. This board has had enough. This is a frivolous waste of time and we can't do that anymore. I, I, I'm going to ask the board what their thoughts are before I let you go any further because they've all read the material too. And it, there, there are so many things in there that are just not true and it, 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 it just is flabbergasting. I, I've got to tell you, this costs this town money. Every time you pull one of these stunts, I've been here 18 years, and I have seen five of these from you that have all been denied, all gone away, but all still cost this town a ton of money. And now we're talking about millions and millions of dollars on your frivolous lawsuits. I've had it. This one's not going any further. First of all, are you denying us the right to a public hearing? You certainly do. Excuse me? You have the right to a public hearing. If you have standing, and we're not even sure, or in my mind, I'm not even sure you have standing. In well, this. you can make that decision are you denying us the opportunity to present evidence of our case? I'm, I'm not denying you to have this hearing. I'm telling you that you cannot stand here and lie to us. And that's what that is. And I will not put up with it. Period. So I am not lying to you. I am trying to present facts. And that's there is a building permit that was issued for this project we have done a public records request to this town that no, numerous people have reviewed, and there is no such earth removal permit for what was done here. Well, and if see. I have the chance to present the evidence that we are entitled to present in a public they, hearing, then I'll explain that to you. Sheehan, as you realize that once there's a subdivision permit, earth removal is part of that as part of developing that subdivision for a home. If he took yardage out of there, he took it out with a subdivision permit. That's the way the law reads. You know that. That is not the way the law reads, Mr. Chair, and I would like to explain that, and I would like to walk through the bylaw and the facts to show you exactly what happened and try to have a fair and objective hearing and front of this board, to which we are entitled. You're entitled to tell the truth to and this I would board. like to do and that. You're entitled to follow the bylaws of this town, and you're not. 
And at this point, I'm going to ask town council to weigh in on this. Would you please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Amy Quessel from KP Law Town Council. Um, without hearing uh, what Attorney Sheehan uh, is presenting, from what I have reviewed, which was the um, application, there was also a memo dated December 30th that came into the board. Um, in my opinion, there's not much that this board can do. Um, there was a subdivision that was approved in 2015. Uh, clearly, if that subdivision were, were some kind of, um, using Ms. Sheehan, or Attorney Sheehan's word, a ruse, um, the, um, the challenge to that subdivision approval should have been 20 days after that was approved in 2015. So there is no way that we can go back in time and determine whether that was a so-called ruse or not. Um, that's just an impossibility that this board can't do. Um, there's also claims of um, earth removal that was possibly more than just the subdivision um, that might have gone into setbacks, etc. However, these claims are from 2020, which again um, should have been brought up at that time. Um, I know that the most recent, um, the most recent correspondence that you received on the 30th states that um, for seven years there was um, complaints made to the building department. Um, if there were complaints made and those complaints were not addressed, then they should have appealed to the ZBA as, Ms. as Attorney Sheehan has done you know, numerous times in the past year. So they've also lost that opportunity too. Um, so I, I have, um, I guess I, I have a problem with uh, what exactly this board can do. I'm not really, I can't, I can't find anything that this board can do with, with this request because of the time that's gone by and uh, the activities, you know, were, were allowed under the, sub, under the subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Ms. Sheehan, you go right ahead, but I'm going to stop you every time you tell something that is not truthful. Our evidence will show that the subdivision plan that you're referring to called for the removal of 4,900 cubic yards and that what was removed was in fact 70 times that. I we will walk you through. Let's, let's ask this question. How much earth removal do you think was taken out of it? I'll go right through the numbers right now. You have a chart, exhibit four. I'm sorry, I used exhibit five. And we will direct you to our slides and we will explain exactly how we calculated the 343 cubic yards that were removed. And if Mr. Spencer or anyone else has another way to calculate this, we're more than welcome to hear that number. We ask. Did you have a professional engineer? do this and give you a report, because I didn't see one. I will explain exactly how it was calculated right now, and it was done by a person who's qualified to do this. Is okay. it open source data that is available to the town to do it itself, which I don't need to see do. the documentation. I will explain it to you right now. You have a chart, exhibit five, and I'll walk you through exactly through mm -hmm. the model. Okay. Okay. If you haven't got an engineer's report there, you're not an engineer. And, and listen, I can tell you about brain surgery and I can hold up a bunch of pieces of paper, but I don't know. And I don't think you're a surveyor or a land engineer or any of that. So if I don't have a land engineer's report there, 
then how can I? Well, it is not brain surgery, and perhaps if you would like to listen for a few minutes, I could explain exactly how this was done. And I have the person here who assisted with this, who has taken courses in GIS engineering, and in fact, your own engineering department could have figured this out when we first asked for this request for enforcement. So if you turn to your Exhibit 5, I'll walk you through exactly how we figured this out. We started with a topographic information map that was gathered in the year 2000 that established elevations across the globe. This is called Merit DEM, Digital Elevation Model, that shows how high the hills are and how low the valleys are across the globe. And so we went to this particular site. That's speculation. There has never been somebody out there with a transit measuring to find out how much has been taken. If there has, give me the documentation. Speculation doesn't mean that it's fact. This is not speculation. This was done by a radar satellite imaging system. Done and by qualified by, I can give you all of the articles that talk about how this model is created. are not a report for that piece of property. Meg, you know better. No, I, I do know better, and I know that this is valid data. And if you're going to sit here and say there's no information, and you're not going to require your own engineering department to figure this out, then actually citizens and other people are concerned about the impact on our aquifer and the failure to enforce the bio no, and the done something many years ago. I'm not. I'm not. The violations are ongoing. May I finish on how this was calculated? Mr. Peck, I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, um, I want to hear the, the full presentation. We've looked at the material that's been given to us. Uh, I certainly have questions and, and concerns, but just to complete the public hearing part, I, you know, I want to listen to what the applicant has to say. I will say you. And I would like to refer you back, just for a point of reference, to Exhibit 4, which is an expert excerpt from Land Management Systems Excavation Narrative for this site. And it states that for this subdivision plan for five building lots, that there would be 4,920 cubic yards taken out of this site, and it would take about 246 trucks. That is what was stated in the planning board application. And at the time, the bylaw required the planning board to determine whether the amount of material that was going to be removed was reasonably necessary to allow a subdivision road to be constructed. And that's in the 2015 bylaw, section 205F1 to 3. There's no indication that the planning board ever made that independent determination, but even if it did, that is what land management systems said was necessary to build this subdivision road. And any common observation would see that there were far more, far, there was far more than that taken out, and witnesses can tell you that there were far more than 246 trucks over seven years. And so if I may finish on the calculation on how this digital elevation model was used to estimate the volume, I uh, walk you through this chart. You'll see on the left-hand column on your exhibit, we, this elevation model was used to determine the elevations in the year 2000 when the satellite was flown and it gave a range of elevations across the site. The highest elevation on the site was 156 feet, exactly where the subdivision road was sited. We then took an average of the heights across the site, the 20-acre site, came out to 147.3. Then we took an elevation from a nearby location, which was 126 feet, which approximates 
the current elevation of the site. You can then, anyone can use Google Earth or Mass Map or GIS to calculate the area that was altered. We did that and it came out to 10 acres. The difference between the average elevation of 147.3 on this chart and the current elevation that we're measuring it against, the 126 elevation, is 21.3 feet. That is how much this site was lowered across 10 acres. Then you simply apply math, and it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out how to convert that area, 10 acres by 21.3 feet, comes up to about 343 cubic yards. That's 70 times what land management systems said was going to be taken off the site under the subdivision plan. And that's why there's a violation and there was a violation. In addition, each of the conditions of 205.18, which is natural features, was violated. There was excavation up to the property boundaries all around the site, up to the very boundaries of residents' homes. And that clearly violated the bylaw that was reported to the building department. And to say, well, you should have appealed it then, and sorry, it's too late, we're going to go ahead with the development of the site and overlook all of this is fundamentally unfair. And it's not what the bylaw is intended to do. In addition, we have photo an image, of, and it's a very credible source. It's Massachusetts Mapper GIS that shows excavation into the groundwater. But into the groundwater, you can see that there's a pond that was created. So when we're talking about the 343 cubic yards, thousand cubic yards, that doesn't include how far below grade this excavation occurred. Nobody knows how deep that excavation was conducted. It was then, that pond was then filled in with debris and who knows what and covered over. And we have asked for an investigation of that from the building inspector and that was denied. That's an ongoing violation. This is excavation into the public Harbor sole source aquifer. This is zone three of an aquifer protection district. The aquifer that we're talking about serves private drinking water wells nearby, as well as public drinking water wells. The Plymouth Harbor Sole Source Aquifer was federally designated by the US EPA. The reason is because the aquifer is very vulnerable to contamination. The Aquifer Protection Committee report that this town signed on to in 2007 had recommendations for protecting the aquifer against illegal sand and gravel mining. And that is because the removal of trees, vegetation, topsoil, and sand and gravel exposes the drinking water to contamination. Trees, sand, gravel, and topsoil protect and filter the groundwater. That is a known scientific fact. And I won't go into all the details about how sand and gravel removal and the changing of topography and leveling of 156 foot hills harms and changes the groundwater flow direction. We could have plenty of scientists come in and talk about that. We're requesting enforcement because of violations of the earth removal without a permit. This was not a subdivision excavation and even if it was, it's 70 times what the landowner told the planning board it was going to do. And if there's a permit that this town granted for earth removal of this magnitude, it certainly was never produced in response to our public records request. And I'd like to just point out that section 202.13 of the bylaw provides that there shall be a fine of up to $300 per offense. Each day of violation constitutes a separate offense. There are at least four 
parts of the Natural Features Conservation Bylaw that were violated by this ongoing earth removal. And I can go through those, but I'm sure you're familiar with them. With that, um, I will highlight them for you though. Safeguarding topsoil, one. Limits on grading and minimizing changes to topography, two. Protecting vegetation, three. Conditions for excavating. No excavation shall be done within 50 feet of a lot line. And if it's greater than a 50 foot elevation drop, you can excavate within 100 feet of the lot line. And here, these photographs show, and we have provided you with objective information showing that this excavation went up to the lot line of people's homes. Each of those violations, four of them, occurred day after day for seven years at least, while this is, and it's still going on. And again, there was excavation without an earth removal permit. We're asking you to issue the maximum fines to order site restoration and mitigation and protection of the groundwater. I'd like to point out that we're also requesting a fee waiver. The ZPA's policy requires someone seeking to enforce the bylaw to pay $1,000 to appeal when the building commissioner refuses to enforce the bylaw. To simply try to get enforcement of a bylaw that's intended to protect our groundwater and the public health and safety. This is unjust and it's unfair and we've met the criteria for a waiver and we're asking that you grant that. The public should not have to bring, pay $1,000 to bring an appeal to the ZBA when we don't even get so much as an explanation from the building inspector other than a form checking off denied. To summarize, we're asking for the maximum in penalties and for this unregulated operation to cease and desist and to the, for the restoration of the site. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Sheen. Ed. Attorney Sheen, have you seen the speaker of the mic for that, please? You gotta get Sheen, have you reviewed uh, KP Law's memo dated December 29th? No, it's not provided to me. Uh, so, what I'd like to do is give you this memo. So, because the reality is, is that KP Law is saying that you, uh, we have no legs to stand on. It's a zoning board. That we have, that the, uh, I'd like you to respond to uh, KP Law's determination because we're relying on our council here. And you're saying one thing that we have the right to impose fines and do things like that. But our town attorney is saying our hands are tied. So, uh, Amy, can you give uh, Attorney Sheehan a copy of our memo? My, uh, my hands, my hands all over. Right. Sorry. Can, can, uh, I'd like to give this to you because I think we have, this is very important. I heard what KP Law had to say. I doubt that there's anything that is going to change my mind. I'm happy to read it and come back and discuss it with you. But these are these are violations of the bylaw, and you are the town's enforcement body for enforcing the bylaw. These are ongoing violations. There's no statute of limitations, and we have standing. I don't know what else I can say. So. Our town attorney saying that the time has expired in two different sections, and you're saying that there's no statute of limitations. Our town attorney is saying that there was a 20 day period where you could uh, appeal. That I just want you to say that, that. It's completely absurd to say that we had to appeal at the planning board decision that said there'll be 5,000 cubic yards when it wasn't until seven years later that the violations manifested themselves and it was shown to be a violation of 70 times that. How are we supposed to appeal in 2014 or 2015 when there were no violations? Um, 
Have you watched the site? I have not trespassed on the site, no, but I've watched it through on video, which I'm happy to show you. And I'm quite familiar with the area. And I've been to the meeting. Because uh, I will say, some of us um, have had a chance to watch the entire site. And to my eyes, anyway, speaking for myself, it did not look like a mining site. There were large areas of stands and trees that had been left undisturbed. And there were, even under the, um, the paperwork you provided us for the aerial views, five separate building sites for the five sites. It did not, based on what I saw by walking around, look like a pretense for a mining. It looked like you know, uh, five house sites being uh, excavated. The second thing I've noticed is, and I would thank you for the list uh, that you included of the large removals you know, around town for the last five or 10 years. I would agree with you. Many of them looked like pure pretense to do mining. This one did not. I and mean, so I, I just would say, that's why I ask you if you've seen it. I would also note that your calculation from you know, the, the high to the low and what the cubic yards were, um, this, this uh, site, you, you go uphill to get to it from Long Pond Road. You drive up to it, and then you, you, you walk around the, you know, the idea of there being groundwater there, because, uh, you know, again, I'm not, I have not done drilling and stuff like that, but it's above Long Pond Road, which itself is above, you know, the, uh, the connecting creeks and things. So it just, um, you know, I wanted to listen, study everything, but just, uh, I do not, I see, based on what I physically walked around, a five house sites that were, were, were excavated and therefore it's incidental. They may have taken advantage of the, of the ability to sell the gravel, but this was not a mining site to my eyes. So I just would, would pass that along. Then I may respond. Of course you don't see the hills today, they're gone. We have satellite data and satellite images that show there were 156 foot hills there. And I'm sure yeah, some of the advisors could- They're not all gone, they're standing trees and Yes, there were standing trees, but they were also hills, and that's why we use the 126 foot elevation because it is slightly yeah. above Long Pond Road. That's not at, say, a pond level. And I would challenge anyone to look at this data closely and tell us what we did wrong. And even if it's 100,000 cubic yards, that's still many times more than 4,920 cubic yards that land management systems was said was going to be taken out of there. So, at the time of your request for deployment, were they still removing the ground? Not to my knowledge. Again, so you're asking for an outcome, you know, like you keep on talking about the violations. Well, first of all, you've got to be found in, how would I say it, not in contention with the bond law before you can even impose these, want to impose them, that's one. Two is, you know, this should have been brought when they were doing the excavation. If you had done it then, this board would have, would have act on it in the middle of it. But y'all look at this is retrospective. Seriously, I don't see how we can even act on this. Seriously. If I may respond to that, complaints were made. As the Lee, Lee Hartman and many other people know, if you want me to do a public records request to get every email that was sent, and every record of every phone call, I'd be happy to do that. But complaints were made, people were ignored, the hills are gone, and to say, oh well, it's too late, that's not the way this is supposed to work. You're not, this is, this was an active sand and gravel mining operation, whether it's 10 times or 20 times, it was not 4,420 <coughs> cubic yards, it was not 246 trucks. You have excavated up to people's property lines all around the site. That's okay. Well, you know, first of all, the landlord gives out the, the uh, gravel permits for the 
subdivision. Is there entitled to do that? Mm -hmm. and, and it only comes to what if, if it's, uh, it's not uh, needed or it's um, in, not incidental, then they spend it to what? So first of all, they have the right, they passed they this with some gravel they knew was going to be removed. You're claiming one amount. It's in the past, so, so we're supposed to take your word. And anyway, so what was removed? Uh, you know. Okay. I'm showing you the subdivision plan and excavation narrative that was put in front of the planning board and upon which their subdivision approval was based. There was no zoning permit. There was never a special permit. In 2015, they were only they were, were required to get a determination of what was reasonably necessary. They basically told the planning board that 4,920 cubic yards, it's right there in your packet, was what was reasonably necessary. Far more than that has taken out and this credible evidence that no one has rebutted. Going out there today and saying you don't see any hills with all due respect to anyone, yeah, the hills are gone. Okay, we, we, we've heard that. We've heard, you know, I think. Have you any more questions? Well, not for the applicant, but I think we open it up. To I'm going to. <coughs> um, but I don't want to keep going over the same stuff over and over again. So, unless you have more evidence, I'm going to open this up. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of the petition? And the petition is is pretty clear that they want the building inspector to take action on something that he has denied taking action on. Now, is there anybody that wants to speak in favor of that petition? Go right ahead, ma'am. Come to the microphone and identify yourself, please. They have bought the land. Um, I'm just going to say a few things about how much earth removal was actually taken out of it. Uh, I grew up on that property, lived there until I was 28 years old. And it was, at one time, my parents' backyard was completely level all the way to the full of farm uh, it, I, I guess, I think all of you should go and walk the uh, go in there and take a look and see where Full of Farm Road is and actually walk down and see how much earth removal is actually taken out of it. When I grew up, I could walk completely flat from the top of my father's red stake where the top of the hill, uh, someone made reference to the top of the hill 
that is his uh, land, went straight flat all the way to Fuller Farm Road, and then it dropped off down into Fuller Farm Road. There's a river that runs behind Fuller Farm Road. It's, it was completely flat all the way there. Uh, Jenkins water hole is on the right side. Uh, and that's also been taken out completely. That was completely flat all the way. They built a house there years ago. Uh, residents, it was all landlocked in there. And my, my parents spent most of their life, they've been there for 60 something years, most of their life in land court trying to uh, force people from not going in there. And it was always in land court, different situations that uh, really, they never had the money and they did make some complaints about what was going on there and really nothing was ever done. So, you know, tonight I know that uh, there's a lot of tension in the room about what's actually gone on there, but I'll tell you this much, that a tremendous amount of earth has been taken out of that. I grew up on that property. It's complete old now. It goes down to an old area. Uh, Reference of 33,000 yards, it, it could be even more than that. And it's, it's an unbelievable that that took place in a, in a town like this where there were complaints made. There was a fence put up and my parents really wanted to, but they really didn't have the money to fight what was going on there. Uh, there's no buffer. It's completely right to the lines of all the residents there, they abut that property. And people were not, it was supposed to be a development. People were not given the right uh, and direction to putting that uh, development in the, in the first place. Now, New Hope Chapel is taking over, uh, and they inherited something that now they want to put a church in there with a large parking area, and it's it's one of the the finest. Uh, recreational sites in the whole town right now. It's an unbelievable area. It abuts the Eel River watershed. It, 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 there's a lot of things that go on there in there, but environmentally, that shouldn't be disturbed. And, you know, you can make reference to that or whatever, but um, I'm just saying there was a tremendous amount of gravel taken out of it. You can say that it looks great, but if you saw what was there before and what's there now, it was a big, big difference. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Not only are the acoustics lousy, but the, <laughs> <laughs> the planning's not so good either. <laughs> My name is Ann Balboni. I'm at Director Butter and um, had, was also brought up there and came back in 2004. And my husband, Joe, and I built um, our retirement home there <laughs> next to my parents. I did prepare something. I wasn't going to get up because of, as my brother said, the tension in the room. However, I feel that this is important for you to know. So, we came here this evening to try and understand how this development got to this point and to see presentation by a machine to save the Pine Barrens. Apart from Wildlands Trust, which was formerly owned by the Harris family for over 100 years, my husband Joe and I have the largest direct abutter with over 400 feet of abutter lot lines in this project. In addition, the abutters are my parents, my cousins, and the Dean family. For history, you should know that Joe and I spoke in favor of the subdivision. And it was an allowed use in the Anaram Zone. We appeared before the planning board. We had some concerns regarding the conservation habitat and status and the plan in general. The plan was discussed and approved, and we were encouraged to trust the developer, Scott Spencer, would do as required and they would be buffers and rain gardens would work. Soon thereafter, every tree came down right along the lot line. In addition, our two boundary markers were destroyed when the road was cut in. We were again told that buffers and trees would be reestablished and that erosion would be replanted. Once the subdivision road was built, we experienced flooding on Long Pond Road with the sloop spray of water coming from the subdivision. 
We reported that to the town and the DPW, and the DPW did come and dig a ditch on the west side of Long Pond Road and diverted the water into Jenkins' water home, which was a burn up pond. The town also cut a smaller sluiceway into a depression we have in the front of our property so that the water would disperse without flooding. That seems to help with the exception of snow banks and ensuing rains, but it works. We put up a fence along the entire perimeter and added $10,000 worth of trees as nothing was done after the completion of the asphalt to plant any buffers. We had people walking over the hill onto our property thinking it too was the lot in the subdivision. When questioned, when he would stabilize a plant, Scott advised us that he was not afraid to spend money to make things look nice. Nothing was ever done on the east slopes. They continue to be bare to this day. What continued over the next five years was machines and trucks in and out and working particularly in that middle section. It went lower and lower and wider and wider. That property gently sloped upward from elevation. I think everyone has described that. My brother did so quite well. It went from my parents' back lot line to a slight slope to the Harry's Wildlands Trust property, straight up. <laughs> there was no hole there. The slope you see is machine made. They would stage the soils and then that would disappear. When we saw the grade was going so low in the center and cut wider and wider, we inquired of Scott what he was doing. He advised us that he was building a house for himself. He was make, making an approach drive and putting in a large stone circular bridge that he would drive under to the approach to his house. This never happened, and, the, and he continued to use that lot. The lots were for sale, supposedly, yet we had numerous people tell us there were no trees and it was a mess. When you can't sell RR lots that are surrounded by beautiful conservation land in a seller's hot market for five years, there's a reason. Either they had no intention of selling those lots, or it was a source of income until you could unload the entire package. Or he just was really not good at it. He was able to outbox the system, set in place to protect the bylaws and the abutters. When the new owner purchased the property and the machines continued out back, room was taken, gravel was taken off the hill again, and 68 loads of stumps appeared. Joe and I spoke with new owners, Matt Glenn and Neely. We advised that Scott had dumped the stumps, machines were out there, and room and topsoil was being loaded and taken. Neil seemed surprised. Matt did not. And that is where the term unscrupulous came from. We learned that Scott's memo was it's best to ask for forgiveness than for permission. That permission should have come from the ZBA. To forgive entirely is not only to condone, but to approve of such practices and encourage it. We are not exempt from fault either. What our families and Leah Butters did wrong, and I heard that this evening, you're correct. We did not put all of our concerns in writing before or coming before the board sooner. Our concerns were verbally and in hindsight, casually mentioned at the town hall as we were conducting our own business. We wanted to believe the buffers would be replanted and restored and the house lots would be nice. We didn't put in the work either to bring this problem forward until learning the initial plan of the current owner was to remove 300,000 cubic yards of gravel and sand off the property. So when we wrote, then we wrote to the town with our concerns, and here we are today. I don't believe that the Pine Barrens position should be seen as a position against the town or the ZBA to make those parties look bad nor should it be seen as an attack on the system of what should be checks and balances between the need to provide proper development and enforce the bylaw. If these can be done, if this can be done, that balance, if these checks and balances are overlooked or worse, ineffective, due to dishonesty and lack of respect for such bylaws and boards, where does that leave us? It's not Ms. Sheehan and the Pine Barrens that is disrespecting the town, it's the developer. To allow such negative practices to go unenforced and overlooked is to condone it. To condone development without pulling zoning permits leads to lack of oversight. This was precisely the purpose here. The goal was to outskirt the abutters, board and the town. A decision to hold him harmless hurts all of us. The abutters, the ZBA, and the town officials. In closing, our promise as abutters, all of us, our family, our neighbors, is that we will act with integrity. 
and will respect and trust the system and be professional. Integrity is something you learn and that you earn and that you live. It is our sincere hope that there are those systems of checks and balances still at work here in Plymouth as we rely on this, you as a board and as a town to hear our concerns as well. Respect and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Mr. Sarkey. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Rich Sarkey, town meeting member, precinct two. I don't want to comment upon the arguments that have been made by Ms. Sheehan. I wouldn't have anything meaningful to add to those. Um, and I do have some comments with respect to the proposed church, but I'll wait until you have a hearing on the, pro the proposed church, I believe, in two weeks' time. My only purpose in standing up today is to make a comment and a suggestion. I think the obvious hostility that you demonstrated, Mr. Chairman, toward the presenter does not speak well for the hearing process. She has a right to make her case, and you and the other members of the board to hear her out, and if you don't believe that what she's saying is credible, then you have every right to vote against her. But she had to beg and scrape in order to make her presentation tonight, because you were calling her a liar, mm -hmm. and you were saying that she knew that what she was saying is false. And I don't think that reflects well on the public process. So that's, that's my only comment and suggestion. I'll be back on the 18th to talk about the church. I know that's not the subject matter for today, but I'm saying what I'm saying most respectfully. I, I, I think that if uh, a transcript of what was said here tonight by you and by the other members of the board were presented to a court, I think a judge might have difficulty concluding that you came to the hearing with an open mind. Mr. Serpy. I have to agree with you on a lot of that, but look at our point of view too. And yes, I came in here angry about this because there are some other extenuating circumstances that you're not aware of. I know that there are other cases. I allow you, please. So yes, I'm not happy with this whole thing because there isn't much we can do with this for a lot of reasons. And I, I believe, Richard, you've been an attorney for a long time. You've represented me. Yes, sir. Okay. And so I trust you, and I will tell you that when somebody stands here and tells me that something is not fact, when it is, I get, I get really, really put off. And you appeared before this board many, many, many times, and you've always been prepared. And one of the things you've always understood is how the bylaw works. And you understand the subdivision bylaw. And you understand that with a subdivision bylaw, with a permit for a subdivision, earth removal is part of that permit. You know that. Now, <coughs> to say that there was no permit for gravel removal is just not true. When something is said and it's not true, what is it? It's an untruth. So, and you know that, and every attorney that practices before this board, and especially land attorneys, they know that. That's fundamental. Mr. That's Chair, I, I don't want to get into the merits, but I don't dispute the principle that you're making that some gravel has to be removed from the site incidental to the building of five housewives. But there comes a point. Yes. Which, there comes a point at which the size of the amount of gravel that's being but, removed and again, is, is disproportionate to the building of five houses. That's and, and again, 
Richard. Yeah. We have experts that determine those things, and it's not by satellite, and it's not by supposition, and it's not by estimation. It's by transits, tape measures, measuring, walking the site. The, the petitioner has never even walked the site. So, it, in my eyes, is supposition. And I can't let... We deal in facts, you know that, Richard. You taught me that. We have to have facts. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Zedder. <coughs> My name is Pat Adam, and I'm the precinct chair of um, Precinct 12, and I've been following um, Ms. Sheehan's um, petitions. I'm very concerned about the amount of gravel removal in the town, and I'm very new to the Zoning Board of Appeals procedures. I was wondering why this wasn't on PAC TV or a Zoom meeting, and now I think it's very obvious why, because of the behavior of the chair and the way he treats the petitioner. No wonder you don't want to televise. I am just appalled at the way the petitioner has been treated. I always thought that the Zoning Board of Appeals was non-biased, and today totally destroyed that notion. I'm very disappointed. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. I'm Charlotte Muller, president of the Southeastern Massachusetts Fine Merits Alliance. I too have been following some of the CBA hearings um, where Michigan has brought in. Concerns about the way sand and gravel removal is monitored by the town. Uh, in this case, it doesn't look like there was enough sand and gravel removal on the subdivision permit to warrant monitoring. But I think we've seen enough evidence, I, I too am a believer, that you can definitely tell elevations from the history of Google Earth compared to what we're seeing today. Plus, you heard testimony from the neighbors who watched this process. I think there's enough information here to warrant the CBA to request an investigation by, I assume, the um, inspector, the uh, Division of Inspectional Services. And also, I would say, Question, why do you think Michigan would go to all of this trouble and all of the time to put together so much information to meet with neighbors, to talk to people? You know that not everyone can afford this thousand dollars just to bring a, an appeal to this board. I once paid the thousand dollars myself for another project that ended up going bust, it was a solar project. It, it's unconscionable that citizens who see things happening in town, who want to bring these concerns to the town, have to pay $1,000 to do that. I know that was a vote of the ZBA and at one point, but I would just ask in this case that you grant that waiver and that you do what you can to verify or prove false Michigan's claims and the neighbors' claims that there has been a lot of sand and gravel removal far beyond what was incidental. I understand you're concerned about costing the town money. We are all concerned about town expenditures. We're all taxpayers. I understand your concerns, but I who said we really need a fair hearing and we need an investigation beyond tonight to 
determine what is happening on the site. And every sand and gravel, every incidental project that's approved should have a monitoring component to it. Thank you for listening you. to me. Anyone else? Here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sam Chipman. I am a registered professional engineer uh, <clears throat> in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I'm quite disturbed by your contention that accurate elevation and volumetric calculations cannot be made using aerial photography and satellites. This is very much a current part of the practice, uh, has been increasing so for years. Um, I have not worked for the petitioner in this case, um, but I just wish to vouch for the fact that accurate measurements and determination of area and elevations and volumes can be made and are being made routinely in the survey practice today through aerial photography, some of which comes from satellite. So I would hope that the board would just acknowledge this advancement in the practice of land surveying. That's all. Sir, we do. And we see those kind of things all the time. And we take them with a lot of uh, faith that they are accurate. But what they are is they're done by an engineer, and that engineer puts his stamp on it. I don't see any of that information here with an engineer's stamp on it. If you're willing to do that, then we're talking about an entirely different thing. And as an engineer, you know that, that without a stamp and stuff, it's still not evidence. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, I'm Anita Belay, 120 King Drew Road, and I just want to put it out there as another witness to the incredible volume of sand and gravel that was taken out as a person that walks those trails almost every day and you see it happen over and over over these years. It couldn't be that 5,000 cubic yards. It was way, way more. I'm, I'm just another witness. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Mike Sloan. I've been a taxi homeowner here for over 30 years. I'm also a member at New Hope. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, I've, I've been to a lot of the building uh, team uh, meetings, and I know that one of our primary purposes has been to kind of appease and to uh, be good neighbors down there. So whatever happened before, and I, I can't speak intelligently to that, I don't know, but I know that a, a lot of the, the lying and non-factual information that's been put forth in social media has uh, been frustrating to me as well as it is appears to have been to some of the, uh, the members of this board here. And all I know is that I heard Ann Belmoni talk about, you know, uh, that, that they would act with uh, integrity and respect, and I believe New Hope has put absolutely its best foot forward to do likewise. So I just want to add that. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I am going to close public comment and bring it back to the board. Sheen, do you have anything else? Would you like to address anything that's been said? Other than beat up on me. Oh, I can't help but have the last word, of course. <laughs> but I would urge you to take into account the eyewitness testimony that you had, along with our calculations, happy to sit down with those inspectors to further explain that, to explain the exact model that we use. If anyone is a professional engineer and is willing to come forward to do this, you know, we're doing this on a volunteer basis, <coughs> on a volunteer budget. Um, we've asked professional engineers to do this, to help us out with this. A lot of them have conflicts of interest in this town, 
I can't tell you how many people I've been to and asked to do this. I don't see any reason why there couldn't be an investigation along the lines of having the town's own engineer look into this. They could simply take our information, I'll give you more details about it, and why not have the town engineer, your own PE person, tell us, is this in the ballpark or not? Is this more than 4,920 cubic yards, like they said was going to be removed, or not? And with that, I would request that you take that very seriously. This is credible information. I am not a liar. I did not come in here intending to deceive or malign anyone. I researched this extremely carefully. I know this bylaw very well. I don't make this up. And I carefully reviewed each and every fact that I stated today, and I reviewed the calculation of this model using the digital elevation model based on the satellite that flew over the Earth using radar and compared this to the current elevations from that model. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to close this here. There'll be no more testimony other than before we do that, I'm going to ask Mr. Mayo if you anything to add to this. Amy, have you anything to add to this? Um, it's, I think it's in my memo. Okay. The Gallagher case is in there. Yes, yes thank you. Okay, I'm going to bring it back for a board discussion on the bylaws. Yes, yes, you may. Amy, can I ask you a question? Yes. So we have complaints that are going on right now about what's happening. When do you think the, say that the period to object has gone, that the, the, the petitioner doesn't have any more rights to appeal the building uh, commissioner's decision? When would that end, knowing that we had all these supposed violations, when would that period end if we had phone calls and emails sent to the town? And say one was sent a couple weeks ago. Would the petitioner still be not allowed to object to this based on if we get recent complaints? So if the complaints are a request for enforcement under 40A Section 7, then the building commissioner has 14 days to respond. However, that 14 days is directory, it's not mandatory. Therefore, um, I, I can't give advice to private parties, but if I were representing someone, I would appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals after 14 days, under 40A Sections 8 and 15. And- so we're, uh, we're just talking about the regular mom and pops here that are crying in front of us. That, that say, there's more gravel to be taken out. We don't, they don't have a code section. When would that period of them complaining prohibit the petitioner from bringing a valid complaint and try to understand. I would say at the outside, at the outside, it would be um, it would be 44 days after they file a complaint. There's 14 days for the building commissioner to respond, and then there's 30 days to appeal to this board. Okay, so the so the time period is we have to have an appeal filed within 44 days of the last complaint. So, um, so uh, Mr. Conroy, the, um, unfortunately, the admission that there were numerous complaints cuts against the applicant's case because they knew that there were, they knew that, or, or they felt that there were violations. Therefore, they should have followed through on their complaints in the appropriate way, and they didn't. And that's what the Gallivan case stands for. And the Gallivan case um, specifically states in that case that you cannot you know, miss your opportunity for a violation and then go come back and try and resolve that through the 40A Section 7 process. And so, Again, where they claim that they've seen these violations for seven years, it cuts against what they're asking for now. 
particularly because there's no earth removal happening right now. So if, so then I'd like to ask the building, so 24 days. In the last I, I, yes, however, it's not necessarily 44 days because, because this, the 14 days is directory, not mandatory. A building commissioner could issue his denial in 16 days. Then they have 30 days from then to appeal. But if, if there's no response, then they should probably have appealed to the um, to the zoning board of appeals in the proper amount of time. So can I ask the building commissioner a question? So when was the last complaint that you received? I have not received any complaints until Ms. Sheehan filed a request for enforcement. I've been here short term, I've been here about a year and a half. I think the the complaints that are being discussed are, are some years ago, I'm under the impression, but I have not received any complaints about that site because it's been quite inactive since my time here. Thank you. So the request to is to overturn the building commissioner's uh, the building commissioner's um, denial of enforcement dated November um, 8, 2022. But I was looking for that date. Okay, but for the purposes of our board voting, I will make a motion that we support the applicant's demand uh, for um, enforcement with the request made on October 20th, 2022, and the commissioner's denial on November 8th. I am uh, making a motion to support the request to uh, overturn. Okay. I want to discuss the case. Yes. So before we vote, okay, that's fine. Really, so how I look at this case is that we have a statute of limitations. We have a situation where, in my opinion, there's been more than 4,920 cubic yards taken out to an egregious amount. Uh, I think that we 
butters. And it's awful. And there are people crying. I think it's tra a travesty. However, from the zoning board, we have town council has put up that we basically have 44 days from the date of a complaint. So looking at what we have in front of us is, our, from, this, from my perspective, our hands are tied. However, from seeing what's gone on, uh, I'm very disturbed on what's gone on. And this is happening a lot. And I think that uh, I know the site work. And I think that the abutters in this town has been done a real disservice here. From my perspective, I have to vote to support the building inspector's decision because we have 44 days from the date of uh, when I asked the petitioner, what, what, what basis can I support we're going to overturn this? And I, I, didn't, and I didn't hear anything. And, and so uh, you know, I'm up here keeping an open mind, but I will vote we're bound by the bylaw. And so I wanted everyone to know why I'm going to vote to in support of the uh, building commissioner's decision. We're going to set for this. I just want to make a comment too. Yes, I agree with everything you had said, and that's why I, I had asked. There was still gravel being removed at the time she made this application. I wouldn't have a problem overturning it. I do because it should have been done in the past when all this was happening. And it's sad that it didn't. I would have been on their side, especially the homeowners. Mm -hmm. I think he did cross the line. The problem is it's not at the time that the enforcement was asked for. It was completed, done, and everybody's on their way. The land was even sold. So um, I just can't see uh, not supporting the building of the uh, commission. That's just my opinion. The only thing is, David, on, on, on your thing, okay, so. It, that's why I want to be very careful on the language. So right, but right now, I'm officially you know, I'm not even sure where it's going. I, I will ask for it. I just want to echo what my fellow board member said. I have a lot of sympathy for what the virus have had to go through with the previous landowner. And I, I hope, Mr. Spellman, what you said is true about how you're going to act going forward. But as the other members of the board have pointed out, and I'm going to rely on town council here as well on this, is um, as difficult as that decision is. I will ask you again, do I have, do we have a motion? Or do I have a second? So what is exactly our motion? The motion is to uh, support overturning, the motion is to support overturning the building inspector's denial. And so in doing that, if you vote yes, you will have overturned the building inspector. If you vote no, you will upheld the building inspector. Because long ago, and Peter will tell you this, and, and there was a uh, town council who went on to become a judge who always told us that we cannot motion a negative. So he's motion, his motion is in support. Now whether you support that or not is a, a whole other thing. But we have to do a positive motion. I understand that, but why isn't the word just plain and simple to approve case number whatever it is? Well, right? you, you can do that, but this probably is going to have more litigation tied to it, so we really want to be pretty specific. And just to repeat it, so we completely understand, so a yes vote overturns the building inspectors. Correct. A no vote supports the building inspectors. Correct. Just so we know what the yes and no vote votes mean. So do I have a second? Second.
those in favor of this motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as I also explained, um, you know, my thinking, my colleagues mm -hmm. have so far. Uh, I'm, I've made the motion, but I will be voting in the negative because uh, there is no question in my mind that the prior developer was sleazy and he took advantage of it. Careful, careful. Okay. Uh, all right, I will withdraw that word, but just I, I took advantage of, of the situation. Uh, I don't, I, I agree that probably a lot more gravel than he proposed was taken out, but incidental is in the eyes of the beholder. And these were five house lots. When I walked the site, and I looked at the uh, satellite images, uh, even if there was more gravel than potentially needed, it was five uh, house lots. So um, uh, I appreciate the heartfelt comments from Ann Balboni in particular mm -hmm. and, and, and others, but uh, with my colleagues, uh, uh, I am gonna vote in support of the building inspector. And before we take the vote, I'm gonna say something, yes. And, and I probably should have been, or I should have handled it better. Secondly, we know that David spoke of the prior owner's uh, ability to follow the rules, and it seemed to be rather hard for him. And yes, there's probably not. What more yardage came out of there than what was originally in the permit? But one, our director of inspectional services was not even employed with the town, and that all went on. And number two, um, we, in, unless we have documentation by an engineer and all of that, hearsay and, and speculation, and even satellite imagery and all of that is wonderful, but it's not evidence. We have to deal with facts because inevitably this ends up in court. <coughs> the judge is going to say, what is the facts? So, and thirdly, and more importantly, I hate gravel removal. And there are a couple of board members here that will tell you I was on the, the uh, bylaw committee that created the gravel removal bylaw and I tried to make it possible because my feelings are you can cut trees down and they'll regrow but when you take a hill out of this town it's never coming back and we deserve to leave our children and everybody as much as we can and to that I agree with Mrs. Sheen on a lot of this but we still have to deal in fact and the fact is that I don't see where I can support this petition because there are, are definite bylaws that we have to go by and if this does in fact end up being litigated further, we have to on the side of the town be able, this board has to be able to justify the decisions that we've made. And the decisions that we make are adjudicatory in nature. So the only ones that can overturn it is the courts. So we don't take that lightly. And with that, I probably said all I need to say. I'm going to take the vote. All in favor, and in favor means that we will overturn the buildings. All those in favor, all those opposed. The motion does not have. will take about a five minute recess. We've got a little bit more stuff to, to do. And then thank God the